What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. The NHC has now retagged these two areas of interest that are approaching Georgia and Florida and this in Central America, respectively. And we also have this area of interest that is continuing to organize at a very decent pace right here. We now have a 60% chance of development in the next seven days, up from 40% yesterday. And these have 0 and 10% respectively right here. This area of interest, though, is kind of interesting because it is expected to cross... Uh, through Central America and potentially develop in the Eastern Pacific over here. So we're going to go ahead and talk quickly about this. And then after that, we're just going to go ahead and move to the big stuff. Tropical wave near, uh, near the eastern coast of Central America is forecast to move across Central America into the Eastern Pacific Ocean in the next day or so as in, in the area of low pressure is expected to form in the coast of southern Mexico later this weekend. Thereafter, gradual development of the system is forecast, and a tropical depression will likely form as it generally moves west-northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour off the coast of southern Mexico right there. Now that that's taken care of, this is going to be moving out into the Pacific. We have this area of interest that isn't going to develop, but still heavy rainfall is possible across Georgia, Florida, and South Carolina. So if you're in these areas uh, right here, be very prudent, and if... Uh, if it, there's water on the road, turn around, do not drown. Now, this area right here is the main show for today right here. 60% chance of development. Environmental conditions are expected to be favorable for gradual development of the system, and a tropical depression could form early next week while the disturbance moves west-northwestward to northwestward at 15 miles per hour. So this is the situation we have right here. We now have a 20% chance of development in the next 48 hours right here. And if we go ahead and take a look at back at satellite right here, it's this area of interest right here. These two areas of interest right here aren't really going to be doing that much. I mean, this one might once it enters the Eastern Pacific, but this one right here is the main show. We're going to go ahead and talk about what's working for and against this area of interest right here. Here's what's working for it. Very warm sea temperatures, 28 to 29 degrees Celsius across much of the main development region, across much of the Atlantic over here, right there. About 27 to 29 degrees Celsius for those of you who live in the United States is 80 to 84 degrees Fahrenheit. Just for some context, right there. So very warm waters, more than uh, more than enough to for this thing to develop. If we take a look at the OHC, very favorable OHC. In a lot of areas are cracking 100 OHC across much of the Caribbean, across much of the main development region, which is something we were not even anticipating in 2020. At this point in 2020, we weren't even at that point. So considering how much more OHC there is now than there is as three years ago is imperative, especially considering where this thing is going, because basically if this was in 2020, it would not have that much energy to work off of the of due to the ocean heat content being much lower. But now where this thing is going, it has like an at the at a minimum around seventy OHC and at a maximum well over a hundred. So definitely something we absolutely should monitor right there. Now we're gonna go ahead and show you the shear and kind of talk a little bit about that because this is a bit interesting. The shear, at least where this area is going, is has been fluctuating quite a bit. So definitely something to keep an eye on to see if it weakens or not. If a pocket weakens and this thing moves through it. Then that will definitely have to uh, have to be discussed right there because that could definitely help its development. But for now, we're gonna have to wait and see. We're gonna go ahead and show you what was going on over the last 12 hours. 12 hours ago, we were seeing like 40 to 50 knots across a lot of these areas right here, and it's been on a gradual decline. However, it's still been kind of stubborn and fluctuating. It's around 25 to 30 knots now, but it could increase or decrease depending on what happens. So that's something we need to continue to keep an eye on. Because the shear forecast, at least for this area of interest, is isn't particularly that impressive, which is why many models don't exactly have this thing developing as strong as it could be. And we'll talk about that in a second, but basically the shear where this thing's going, it's going to be decently sheared. So the shear is going to uh, give it uh, some trouble developing according to what the Europeans saying until it gets to or towards the subtropical Atlantic over there. So basically way past land, way past Bermuda over here. And it won't, won't be until 
it gets till the sub to the subtropics and there's decently warm water there remember we had hurricane dawn form and strengthen over there so it definitely could develop right and strengthen right over there now we're going to go ahead and show you the moisture component to all of this because the moisture has been interesting there is some dry air primarily due to the sahara dust right here where this thing is heading towards although it is going to be mainly staying in that moist pocket except for it getting intruded by dry air as it's there but as it clears out of that dry air and starts to fight it off it is going to get have a better chance of development yeah that's the situation we have going on right here but generally across the atlantic the, sh the dry air is continuing to fluctuate we are going to see one last bit of resurgence of the dry air starting in early august but after that it's going to be on a bit of a downward trend so I'd say starting the second week of August, we're going to start seeing more activity across much of the Atlantic after the Sahara dust starts to disappear and starts to fade. We'll even show you the GFS run to kind of see what's going on with that. The GFS but pretty much starting the second week, especially in the western part of the Atlantic, has this starting to decrease considerably. And we have a lot more moist air coming off of Africa and more waves coming off. So I'd say starting the second, like I said, starting the second week of August, we're going to start seeing some more storms trying to develop and storms trying to potentially impact land. Now we're going to go ahead and show you some ensemble runs to kind of show you how strong this potentially could get. And the European Ensemble, while some of them still have this potentially getting up to a Category 1 hurricane at the very least, some of them have it mainly keeping it as a tropical storm as it's moving through much of the Atlantic right there. So definitely something to monitor for sure because there is still uncertainty on how strong it gets. It's really going to depend on how quickly this thing will organize. Because, and then basically as time continues to go on for the European, they do have some ensembles calling for potential development, but they're far in, in, in between, primarily due to the Sahara dust that's going on right there. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the GFS ensemble runs right here. We'll go ahead and go back to the zero Z to just kind of show you what we're thinking right here. Similar with thing right here, potential hurricane scenarios kind of matching what the European is saying, at least until when it gets to the subtropical Atlantic, potentially could threaten Bermuda. But yeah, that's what we have going on right here. And then as we're going on and as time continues to go forward, by about 16 days out, we do have more scenarios of tropical systems developing, but they're mainly going to be hampered due to the Sahara dust, at least for now. So something to definitely monitor as time continues to go on. We'll show you the GPS ensembles right here. And the GPS ensemble, similar scenario, all three of the big ensembles have this agreeing that it's going to develop at some point. Although the GPS ensembles do have some potential stuff forming in the Caribbean Sea right here, about four days out and potentially impacting the United States. I actually want to go ahead and cross-check that with, uh, for, uh, sorry, the... Uh, the moisture component to that and see what's going on with that kind of see if this is kind of possible or not and based off of what I'm looking at there is a little bit of dry air in the Caribbean and in the Gulf right now but it's definitely feasible but it's completely it is incredibly unlikely as I'm not 100% sure where this even is at so I'll have to kind of disregard that for now but still something to pay attention to right there and then basically gps has a lot more of these ensembles starting to show some intensification and development as that sahara dust starts to recede we'll continue to update you here on the pat's path predictor channel but with that being said we're going to go ahead and close the video right here i hope you enjoyed it be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new it helps us out helps us make more videos like these the goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather and if you want to come hang out with us at storms unite and see the behind the scenes of how we do these videos link to it is right over there but with that being said have a wonderful day guys stay safe